Okay, Kipsters, this is lesson 25 on customary units of measurement, and this is question number one. First and most importantly, uh, there was a blunder in the packet. Please make sure you put two pints next to one quart. It should not be four pints. There are two pints that make a quart. All right, so on to the question, as you remember, in the brain strategy, B stands for blocking. We cannot block these answer choices out because we're on a computer, but you can put your hand over it if you want. Uh, I'm going to read through the question and attack it. Here we go. Edgar chose a pan in which to heat enough soup for five people so that each person could have one cup of soup. The capacity of the pan was imprinted on the bottom, but Edgar could only read, could read only the number two. He could not read the unit of measurement. If the soup filled about three-fourths of the pan, what was the capacity unit of measurement of the pan? All right. So, sounds like this question's about feeding people some soup out of a pan. There are five people. That's important. And each person is going to get one cup, one cup of soup. Okay. The capacity of the pan was imprinted on the bottom, but Edgar could read only the number two. He could not read the unit of measurement. So he does not know that. That's going to be a question mark for the unit of measurement. And the soup goes three-fourths of the way up the pan. Underline our question, what was the capacity unit of measure of the pan? All right. So... Geez, this question is complicated. I'm thinking when things get really difficult for me, I like and I end up drawing things out. And I want to draw a pan. This is gonna be the ugliest pan you've seen, but deal with it. Okay. Uh, and the pan is gonna be filled with some soup, and it's enough for five people. So there are basically five people who are each gonna get. A cup of soup. Again, I know this is ugly. Stop making fun of me. Okay, so I got some information down. But this part is important. Edgar could read only the number two. So it's two something. I don't know if it's gallons. I don't know if it's quarts, pints, or cups. I do know the units of these. Each of these is a cup. I don't have to put... I'll put C underneath all of them. But I'm looking basically... For something that's going to fill up five cups. So two somethings is going to give me five cups. But the reason why this problem is even more tricky is because the pan is not all the way filled. It said it was three-fourths of the way filled. So basically up to here. I wouldn't taste soup that looked like that, but you get the idea. Okay, now, it's only three-fourths of the way full, so I think the right first step would be to figure out what is three-fourths of two. So at least we know exactly how much we're dealing with, because we're not dealing with two, we're dealing with three-fourths of two. Now, as I hope you remember... Uh, this is the same thing when you see an of, we're really thinking about multiplication. And when we multiply like this, we got to put our invisible one, shoot across, 3 times 2, 6, 4 times 1, 4. So shoot across, shoot across, shoot, shoot, and reduce. Uh, you can reduce this or do get off my back and then reduce, doesn't matter. Uh, I'll do get off my back first. 4 goes into 6 one time with a remainder of 2. Remainder is like, so, fourth grade. Uh, so we're going to make that into a fraction. You can also make it into a decimal if you want. We have one and two-fourths, which you could reduce in your head. So three-fourths of two is one and a half. All right. One and a half what? This is now the big question. One and a half of what 
is going to give me five cups. All right. Well, thankfully, now that I'm looking at my answer choices, one of these is absolutely crazy. One and a half cups does not equal five cups. Eh -eh. Now, one and a half pints? I don't know. Uh, one and a half pints. Does that equal five cups? Well, let's see. If we really think about it, one pint is two cups. I'm just going to write that down. I hope you guys do the same. Okay, normally it'd be cool to make up a portion, but let's just think for a second. If one pint is two cups, two pints would be how many cups? Sorry, I should have put an S next to that. But yeah, two pints would be four cups. So is one and a half pints five cups? No. Because two pints is four. One and a half would be right in between. In fact, you could probably figure it out. One and a half pints is three cups. Uh, and you could do that without even making a proportion if you just think about it. Okay? So once again, I'm changing... Uh, I'm crossing out B. It's not pints. So now, let's get to quarts. Now, is one and a half quarts five cups? There's really only, I'm going to make a smart cut and just put the Q there. Is one and a half quarts five cups? All right, let's 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 go back up. Or, or is it enough to, to feed five cups? Uh... One pint is two cups. One quart is two pints. So let's think about that for a second. If one pint is two cups, how many cups? If one pint is two cups and one quart is two pints, how many cups are in one quart? You notice that fact is not in that box. But you could put two facts together to figure out what number goes in there. Think about it for a second. Yep. It's four. Okay. So now, it's one and a half quarts going to give us enough soup for five cups. Well, let's do some quick math here. I'm going to make my proportion. One quart over four cups. And then one and a half quarts. And let's see how many cups it gives us. I don't know. Let's A cups. Okay. Cross multiply. Love multiplying by one. And four times one and a half. Well, not always fun to do that multiplication, though we could. I like changing it into a decimal. 1.5. I'll do my math right here. 1.5. Times 4. Okay, that's 20. Keep the 0, bump the 2. 4 times 1 plus 2 gives us 60. Let's not forget to slide over. There's nothing here. So, move over once. That gives us 6.0, which is basically the same as 6. When you divide both sides by 1, uh, that's still going to give you 6. So A is 6. So 1.5 quarts gives us 6 cups. That, even though it's not perfectly 5 cups, that makes sense to me that you could heat up enough soup to give each person 1 cup. You'll have a little bit left over, but if you want to be a great kipster and try out gallons, one and a half gallons is going to be way bigger than six cups. In fact, if you want to try it on your own, one and a half gallons, I'm pretty sure, is going to give you 24 cups, and that's just too big. Okay? So again... This is one of the trickiest problems in our iReady packet. 
take your time, draw it out like I did over here, even though I can't draw, and just think about which answer makes the most sense.